Asus at CES 2026 have the world's first 27-inch 4K WOLED monitor with an RGB stripe subpixel layout. We've got all the details. We're going to get some hands-on time with it in just a moment. They've also got another 5K monitor that we'll be checking out, so we'll get to that. And yeah, let's get into it after this. Thanks to MSI for sponsoring our CES coverage. Check out MSI's range of X870 and B850 motherboards built for the latest AMD Ryzen 9000 series with support for full-speed PCI 5.0 DDR5-8400 Plus with aggressive tuning and easy expo profiles, one-click overclocking, extreme power delivery with up to 110 amp power stages, and USB 4 is standard on X870 models along with Wi-Fi 7 and at least 5 gigabit LAN. Learn more about MSI's range of X870 and B850 motherboards via the links in the description. Also supporting our CES coverage is Thermal Grizzly and their cryo sheet, an excellent alternative to thermal pastes, and because they don't use any liquid, they can never dry out. These graphene thermal pads offer very high thermal conductivity, are easy to use, are extremely durable, and can be used to maximize your CPU and or GPU's cooling performance. So for more information, please check the links in the video description. We'd also like to thank Endorphy, creators of the award-winning Fluctus fans, available in both 120 and 140 millimeters. These high-performance fans are designed to move air efficiently in dense spaces with focused airflow and reduced noise. Perfect for CPU, power supplies, PC cases, and more. So to learn more, please click the links in the video description. All right, very exciting product that we're seeing here at the ASUS booth for the first time. This is the ASUS ROG Swift PG27UCWM, that's what they've gone with for that one. Uh, so this is the brand new LG display, 27 inch 4K W OLED that uses the RGB stripe subpixel layout. So previously they were using RGWB, they've removed the white subpixel for this version and just gone with the RGB stripe, which as you can see on screen here is the primary uh, new selling point for this version of the monitor. Also is the very first W OLED 27 inch 4K version Previously for this size and resolution, there's only QD OLED monitors available, but for the very first W OLED version, they've gone straight to the new RGB stripe. It is also tandem OLED. So previously we've looked at 1440p primary RGB tandem displays, you know, I think the 280 Hz and 540 Hz models. Uh, they're using very similar technology for this 4K version. They have renamed though primary RGB tandem to just tandem OLED, which makes a lot more sense, much shorter and snappier. Now, the change to the RGB stripe layout does have a range of different benefits. The first one is the upgraded text clarity. This will have a big benefit, especially compared to the RWBG layout. The RGWB isn't too bad for text, but still has a few artifacts. With RGB stripe, this should look just like a 27 inch IPS LCD that uses an RGB stripe. So it looks awesome here. It looks just like we've seen from 27 inch 4K LCDs. So I'd expect quite good text clarity. Of course, high resolution, high pixel density as well. So it's not as necessary on a 4K panel as you would see from say a 1440p monitor. That's where I would like to see RGB stripe also deploy, deployed for W OLED. But for now, it seems to be just in the 4K panel. The other benefit that we were told relating to the RGB stripe is a massive improvement in color volume and largely due to color brightness improvements. With previous W OLEDs with the white subpixel, they've been able to go quite high in terms of overall peak brightness, hitting up to, I think we saw up to 14 or 1500 nits with the ASUS primary RGB tandem, the Gigabyte MO27, MO28 Q28, MO27 Q28G, I think that's what it's called. So yeah, we got up to 1500 nits in terms of white brightness, but then with color brightness, especially above that, that sort of 500 nit level, color brightness just hits a wall. It tails off, you're not getting any benefits. We were told with this panel that we should be getting much higher color brightness in terms of red, green, and blue. So that should make it a bit more like a QD OLED in terms of how color brightness is perceived on this monitor. We don't have final specs for what to expect from like red, green, red brightness, green brightness, blue brightness, but at least we're told color volume is improved. However, because of the lack of the white subpixel, the white brightness is going to be lower. We're told a peak of 1000 nits on this monitor instead of 1500 nits for previous W OLEDs. 1000 nits is still, of course, great for HDR, no complaints there, but there is going to be a difference there in the final version. Now, this is what we're being told is a prototype version of the display that has a matte screen finish. However, the final version that you will see in, at some point in the second quarter of this year, we'll use a glossy finish. So that'll be the true black glossy, but this version being shown here 
I believe he's just using the standard version of the display from LG Display. LG Display, of course, make the panel, and the stock standard version is a glossy, sorry, is a matte finish, so that's what you're seeing here. We've also been told the full screen brightness for this panel will be over 300 nits because it is display HDR True Black 500 certified. It does come with DisplayPort 2.1 with the UHBR 20 spec, so full 80 gigabits per second, USB-C with 90 watts of power delivery, all the latest ASUS features, Neo Proximity Sensor, OLED Care, all that stuff, and Dolby Vision as well. So ASUS, of course, have done Dolby Vision on a variety of their monitors previously, and it will be available with this product as well. So don't have pricing for this monitor just yet. We were told it should be pretty similar to the PG27 UCDM, but no final word on the exact dollar amount. And as I said, available in the second quarter of this year. So this will be a really interesting product for people that want that 27 inch 4K panel format, competing with the QD OLEDs um, that use the triangle RGB layout. So yeah, pretty keen to test this one, see how it goes, but haven't been sent one just yet. So that should be in a couple of months from now. So here at the ASUS booth, we've also found another 5K monitor. So this seems to be a big product category that will be coming out towards, I guess, the start of 2026. This is the ROG Strix 5K XG27 JCG. I think that's one of the first times I've ever seen a J in a product name. So I guess they're running out of letters. And they've also put 5K in the monitor name. So anyway, interesting. So of course, this is using the new 27 inch 5K dual mode IPS LCD panel. So 5120 by 2880 resolution at up to 180 hertz for this version. The previous ones that we've seen have gone up to 165 hertz. But ASUS say on this little spec card that it will have a overclock mode up to 180 hertz. So that's interesting. They'll also be providing a QHD dual mode. So 1440p at 330 hertz. That's the same as other monitors that we've seen. No specific overclock for that mode. And all the usual ASUS features. They're claiming 97% DCI-P3 coverage. Display HR 600 certification, so maybe there'll be some form of maybe edge lit local dimming or something with this monitor. I think the previous ones that we've seen, I think the Acer model, they claimed only up to about 450 nits of brightness. Display HR 600 would mean one of the specs is at least 600 nits, so we'll have to see how that goes. Display port 1.4 with DSC, HDMI 2.1, USB C, 15 watts of power delivery, all the usual stuff there. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. As far as I can tell, it looks to be a sort of potentially glossy finish. It might be a little similar to the Acer model in, in how it goes with glossy. Maybe semi-glossy, semi-matte. I'll have to have a closer look at that. We'll get some B-roll of the, the screen coding to see fully how that's like. The, a the Acer model is fully glossy from what we see, so we'll see how that goes. They're also claiming here ELMB2 support, so we will be getting some form of backlight strobing, which is nice, nice premium sort of new ASUS design, ASUS, uh, ROG Strix. We've sort of seen that with some of the other monitors, quite like the way that it looks now. So. Yeah, not sure when this monitor is coming or pricing or anything like that. It's a brand new monitor that we're seeing here at, at CES. So yeah, good to see another 5K option. All right, and that does it for ASUS's monitors that have been on show here at CES 2026. Of course, the star of the show being that 27 inch 4K W OLED monitor using the new RGB stripe subpixel layout. We're expecting to get that a bit later on at some point in Q2. So hopefully we'll be able to do some testing around then. Of course, ASUS has also announced some new QD OLED monitors that we haven't covered in this video. The PG34WCDM, I believe, or N, can't remember the names because they're all terrible. Anyway, the new 360 hertz panel, the ultra wide version, we've already got a full review of that on the channel, so no point looking at that again. You can go check out all of our thoughts and testing on that. The PG32UCDM Gen 3, the new version for 2026, that's also being announced here at the show, but we've been sent that model to review, so we thought not a whole lot of point just checking out a preview style. Once we get back from CES, we'll be doing a full review of that monitor, so You'll see that soon on Monster Unboxed as well. Apart from that, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.